Pirate River Kids together. I am a super fan of all of you. When you're a super fan, you cheer for your team. You make sure your favorite players know that you've got their back. That's how we can treat everyone, every day. We can treat everyone with kindness. Kindness is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. I've got a great way for us to practice cheering each other on with a super fun game called Sports Bingo! All right, so in this game, you'll see two bingo cards up on the screen. Choose for yourself card A or card B. I'll start reading off the spaces and we will see which card wins. And if you chose the winning card, you're the winner. All right, and don't forget the middle space is a free space. And we'll go ahead and mark the boards for you. So keep an eye on your card. Are we ready? Get set, go. First, mark your free space. All right, it looks like the next space is the green football helmet. Awesome job. Find a basketball. Hmm, is anybody getting close? How about if I have the first place medal? Would that help you get a little closer? Okay, put a marker on go team. All right, I know somebody's gotta be getting close. How about the trophy space? Football gloves. Okay, it looks like both cards are getting really close. The next one is the basketball jersey. Okay, who has a baseball bat? Wait! It looks like we have a bingo. Bingo card A is the winner. Well done, everyone. I hope you had fun and maybe even chose the winning card. And now it's time to worship together, and I am so ready to have this time of worship with you. I want my life to live out the love of God. So let's have some fun. Stand up, clap your hands, and let's sing along.
This month is found in Colossians 3:12. You are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. Colossians 3:12. You can practice that memory verse a few times um, with somebody at home. Now it's time for our story. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the Book of Ruth. In the land of Moab, there lived a young woman named Ruth. She married a man from Judah and must have dreamed of a large family and many children. We'll name them Zeke and Hannah and... But Ruth's happily ever after ended before it began. Her husband died and his brother too, and that left Ruth alone with her sister-in-law Orpah and her mother-in-law Naomi, whose husband died too. I have nothing left. Naomi had come to live in Moab during a famine in Judah, but she had gotten word that there was plentiful food in her homeland again, so she planned to take a road trip. Ruth, Orpah, go back to your family homes. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown me. So Orpah kissed her mother-in-law and left, but Ruth wouldn't budge. I'm going with you. Look, your sister-in-law is going back to her people. Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Well, okay then. Finally, after a long and dusty journey, the two women arrived in Naomi's hometown of Bethlehem. Everywhere along the road, barley rippled in the breeze, golden and ready to harvest. Is that Naomi? She don't look so good. Don't call me Naomi. The Lord has made my life bitter. I went away full and the Lord has brought me back empty. Don't listen to them. You just need dinner and a nap. Finding food was their top priority. 
Some of those barley fields belong to my husband's relative, Boaz. The grain is being harvested right now. Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftovers. Go, my daughter. The law instructed the landowners to leave behind some of the harvest for people who needed food. So Ruth followed behind the harvesters, gathering every bit of barley that fell to the ground. Barley. Let's see, you can barbecue it, boil it, broil it, saute it. Ruth worked hard in the heat of the day. In the afternoon, Boaz came out to survey the harvest. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. Boaz spotted Ruth hard at work and asked his overseer, Who is that young woman? She came back from Moab with Naomi. She asked if she could pick up the extra grain and has barely rested all day. Boaz was moved by Ruth's care for Naomi. He waded through the barley to speak with her. Stay here and follow along where the men are harvesting. I'll make sure no one bothers you. And when you're thirsty, you get a drink from the water jars. Why are you so kind to me, a foreigner? I've been told what you've done for your mother-in-law, how you left your homeland to come here. May the Lord reward you. Boaz offered Ruth bread and roasted grain to eat, and at the end of the day, she was able to bring a large amount of grain home to Naomi. So much food! Ruth continued to work in Boaz's fields until the end of the grain harvest, but even then, life would have been very difficult for two women living alone together. So Naomi laid out a plan for Ruth. I will do whatever you say. At the end of the harvest, the workers threshed the grain to separate the edible kernel from the straw. Then they held a big celebration. When the meal was over and the lights burned low, Boaz laid down near the pile of grain to sleep. Ruth arrived and approached Boaz just as Naomi had told her to do. She folded the blanket away from his feet and lay down nearby. <gasps> Who's there? It's me, Ruth. Please give me your protection since you're responsible for our family. Boaz was surprised, but what Ruth had said was true. The Lord bless you. Don't be afraid, I'll do what you ask. Everyone knows you are wise and kind. Even though Boaz agreed to help Ruth, there was a family member who was closer than Boaz. So in the morning, Boaz set out to meet that man and the town elders to settle the matter. I will buy Naomi's land and also marry Ruth, if you will let me. Well, I sure can't purchase Naomi's land and take care of my own land too. So we're good? Go right ahead. Today, you are all my witnesses that I will buy Naomi's land and marry her daughter-in-law, Ruth. As soon as it could be arranged, Boaz and Ruth were married. Naomi came to live with them, and a short time later, Ruth and Boaz had a new baby boy. His name is Obed. Aren't you the sweetest little thing? So through the kindness of Boaz and Ruth, Naomi had a brand new home and a brand new family too. Everyone could see the difference in her face. Praise be to the Lord. He's given you a new lease on life, Naomi. Yeah, that Ruth is better to you than seven sons. Now, Ruth's story doesn't end there. Her son, Obed, had a son named Jesse, who had a son named David, King David. And hundreds of years later, a new baby boy was born in Bethlehem, who was a descendant of King David, and his name was Jesus. Because of Ruth's kindness, Naomi didn't have to face life alone. And because of Boaz's kindness, he and Ruth were married. And Naomi had a new home and a new family with them. Because all of them showed kindness to each other, there was a pretty sweet ending to this story. Obed eventually had a son named Jesse, and Jesse was the father of King David. Many hundreds of years later, there was a baby born through their family line. Can you guess who that was? It was Jesus. All of that happened because Ruth decided to show kindness to Naomi. It's not always easy to show kindness to our family members or our closest friends. We spend so much time together that if we're not careful, we can get on each other's nerves. We can forget to show our family and friends how important they are to us. But Ruth's story shows what God can do through us when we choose to be kind to the people who are closest to us. Remember this, be kind to your family and friends. Let's pray and ask God to help us do that. 
God, thank you for this great reminder of what it means to be kind and what can happen when we are kind. Just like Ruth was kind to Naomi and Boaz was kind to Ruth, uh, God, I pray that that story would remind us that kindness can go from person to person and bless people as they go. Help us look for opportunities to show kindness to everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, what a great story. Things could have ended up very different if Ruth and Boaz weren't willing to show kindness. But because they did, they were able to give Naomi a place to stay where she wouldn't have to be alone. Not only that, Ruth and Boaz had a baby who would end up being like the great, 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 great times a lot grandfather of Jesus. Showing kindness isn't an easy thing, especially when it comes to our relationship with our family and our close friends. Even though we don't mean to, we can hurt each other's feelings. We can annoy or frustrate each other. We can misunderstand each other. We can take things the wrong way. But when we choose to show kindness, a lot of good things can happen. God can work in our lives in big ways and bring healing to our relationships. Remember the bottom line. Be kind to your family and friends. When you show kindness to others, you can show them just how valuable they really are. Do you think your brother or sister knows how valuable they are to you? Try saying it. Or better yet, try showing it. It's like what we say around here. I should treat others the way I want to be treated. Do what you'd want someone else to do for you. Listen, pay attention, show some interest in the things they like to do, encourage them with some kind words or maybe a note to say you've always got their back. Don't miss the chance to show kindness to the people God has put right in front of you. All right, boys and girls, now it's time for our blessing. Please stand up, close your eyes, and hold out your hands like you're about to receive a gift. Boys and girls, may you remember how kind God has been and will be to you. I pray you would remember to show kindness to every single person you meet, even if they aren't your friends and family. Amen. That's all we have for today. We can't wait to see you next week. Bye. Bye. That was for you. Was that way out of frame? I didn't even catch it. Can I see the hand? You couldn't? Oh, man. <laughs> the great, great, great times a lot, great father of, great father, grandfather. The old father, the great, Odin. The great, great, <laughs> great father. I should treat others the way I want to be treated. Do what you do. But... We spend so much time together that if we're not careful, we can get on each other's nerves. I shouldn't have said but. It worked. That's my sight word for this next week. <laughs> but. And they're always like. Miss <laughs> Kilberg said but. <laughs>